What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. What exactly am I going to be speaking about in this today's video? I'm going to be talking about something that is extremely important to understand and ultimately extremely important to grasp. This has everything to do with who you actually are and being completely authentic with yourself, which is something that so many people in our today's time are absolutely lacking. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the true self. We're talking about the authentic state of being, not the artificial self, not the fragmented self, the true self. If this is something you want to know a little bit more about, then you simply have one thing to do, and that is a stay tuned. All right, let me first start with introducing myself just in case you don't know who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck. And I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in direct association with astrology. So with all that information being said, let's move right into the topic of this video at hand. So we're talking about a subject that is so valuable, a subject that is literally so important. This is something that ultimately everyone is trying to achieve, whether they're conscious of it or not. Every single person is trying to find their true self. Every single person is trying to find the authentic expression for them and their soul. Now, as I say this, it almost seems easy. It seems like you know, if I want to be my true self or if I want to be as authentic as I can, I just need to be me. But see, it gets a little bit confusing because the me that a lot of people refer to is not the actual them. It's not the realist aspect of them or the most authentic aspect of them. So what I'm basically saying is a lot of people identify with their ego as if that is their true self, when in fact, it couldn't be farther from it. And that's why there is a big separation between a lot of people's awareness between themselves and the world around them. They don't know who they actually are. They're lost. Lost souls is what they're called. But they don't even know they are. They think they know who they are because they've created an image or an identity that they now think is their true self, but it's not. So we're living in a society today that promotes these inverted perspectives, promotes tons of inverted behaviors, understandings, inverted information. And ultimately, what does that do? It leads the human being to a state of inverted awareness within themselves completely identifying with all the egotistical constructs and not really understanding what's underneath those layers to then penetrate the true self, the actual self. So this is what we need to understand. The true self. Every single person has a true self. Everyone. There is no such thing as being at a point in your spiritual self-development where you 
don't have an opportunity to get in touch with your true self, everyone has this opportunity at all times. It's always there. Now, there are some people that are in some situations and circumstances and have been through certain amounts of life experience that have programmed so much of their identity into their ego that it's a lot harder to fall back into the true self or it's a lot harder to get in touch with the true self because there is a natural process that needs to take place for someone to get there, to get to that true self. And that process is not comfortable and it's not something that happens overnight. It takes time. So some people are at a point where they've been so out of touch of themselves that the reality is they're most likely not going to start the journey of trying to find the true self. And these individuals will live their life and they will eventually pass away and at some point reincarnate. Now, there are other individuals who oftentimes are a little bit more sensitive are a little bit more psychically gifted and start to realize within themselves through an act of self-awareness that they are not being authentic. They are not truly themselves. So as I say this, I'm literally speaking from personal experience where there was a point in my life where I was conscious enough to know that I am not my true self. And this is obviously an uncomfortable thing to become aware of, and it's obviously a challenge to try to find the true self when you don't even really understand what that looks like or what that sounds like or what it is. But once again, we're focusing on the awareness of the realization that you are not your true self. That's what matters the most. Like, Are you able to self-reflect enough to then realize you're not being your true self, you know, you're, you're putting on an act, you're being a character, you're wearing a mask, and that mask is not your soul's truest expression. So I was aware of that within myself, and there are other people that are, become, that are starting to become conscious of this within themselves as well. And this is an amazing and a powerful starting point. This is really where the journey starts to progress. So if you're at that stage, Congratulations. Some of you are not there yet. Some of you are there and some of you have even gone farther than that. Some of you listening are already in touch with your true self. But I'll probably say the majority aren't just because of the nature of the world we live in. You know, it's challenging. So with that being said, that's where it starts. Becoming aware through self-reflection. Realizing you're not your most authentic form of expression, okay? And then there starts this process of what I like to call initiation. So there's something that I like to call unconscious initiation. People don't really understand this, but everyone is initiating to some degree. Every single life experience that you go through is some form of a test in some form of an opportunity. And when I say that, I don't mean to put pressure on you to make you think like, oh, I need to pass the test, or if I don't pass, then something bad's gonna happen. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's a test of opportunity. Depending on which path you take, there's no wrong answer, but it's a test of opportunity to see, are you going to choose the path which is most in alignment with your soul's highest potential or are you going to choose the opposite path and have to learn a lesson that then recalibrates you? So once again, either path you choose, you're going to get value from, but there is a more authentic choice for your personal soul progression. And every single experience you go through in life, literally everything, is one of these initiations. It's some sort of an alchemically transformative experience that is manifesting in your life, giving you the tools, the understanding and awareness you need to know how to navigate that and then transmute it into awareness and understanding and ultimately power so that you can get closer and closer to your highest form or maybe even deepest form of soul expression. 
So everyone's going through these initiations, once again, whether they're conscious of it or unconscious of it. Most people are unconsciously initiating. And when you build that momentum of self-discovery and self-development, this initiatory journey starts speeding up. It starts getting more real. It starts really projecting itself in the world around you and hitting you with flashes of awareness that there is something divine at play here, okay? It hits you with these flashes of awareness that show you life is not random. There are many things that take place on a daily basis that are completely governed by the divine laws of the cosmos. I mean, I'm sure most of you listening have had those experiences in your life where there is no such thing that there is no there is no way that that experience you went through was a coincidence. It's like what are the odds that this thing happened at this exact time when I was thinking about it? And then it 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 communicated something through a symbol that meant something deep to me. This is a sign that the universe is initiating you. It is working with you and through you, giving you the understandings you need to have, okay? So this is what I'm referring to. Everyone's had these experiences and everyone is going to have these experiences if you're not conscious of it yet. So it can happen in your life, you just might not be conscious of it yet, okay? So the more this momentum builds as you are on this journey of self-discovery, the more you start to notice these correspondences manifest, the more you start to see your life as an actual journey, okay? This is why I use the word journey. It's a spiritual journey. Your life becomes this quest. It becomes this dynamic journey that has ups and it has downs, but it all culminates and in, in forms together to manifest that next stage for you, that next piece of knowledge and that next piece of awareness you need. And it does this beautifully. I mean, there's a beautiful balance that that happens or is at play uh, between the positive and the negative that give you this perspective as you're going on this journey. Now, this journey is not a comfortable journey. Now, there are amazing moments throughout the spiritual journey. There are moments where it's it's very satisfying and it's, I mean, it, it makes you realize like this is the reason why you're incarnate or this is the reason why you're alive. But then there are also those same moments where you don't want to keep moving forward. There are those moments where it is so challenging, you don't even know what to do. It's like you freeze under a state of just fear of the unknown. And this happens to everyone within their spiritual journey. Now, it's these moments and it's at these time frames when you really get to do the deepest work in regards to shedding the artificial aspects of your being. So this is going to be all those different aspects that you've plugged into the matrix, all the different aspects of your being that you have plugged yourself into and have identified with thinking that this is what and this is who I am and I will not change because this gives me the security that I want. This version of yourself gets destroyed, it gets dissoluted, it gets dissolved, it gets removed. The deeper you go through your initiatory journey of spiritual self-development, your ego gets challenged to that degree over and over and over and over again until you finally start to get closer to the core of the true self. So really, the only thing that is blocking or shelling your soul, the only thing that's blocking you as you're listening to this, you, between who you think you are and your own true self, the only thing that's blocking you is your own identifications and attachments. And this is not woo-woo by any means. This is not something that's very light by any means, like very, oh yeah, you know, once you understand the knowledge, you're going to figure it out. This is something that's very deep-rooted, okay? There's a lot of trauma that's behind this. 
There's a lot of reasons why you attach to what you attach to. There's a lot of reasons of why you need the security to make you feel real and alive, to live your life and to put on the image that you have for yourself. There's a lot of deep-rooted things that are at play that are causing you to behave in that way and to feel like this is the being you need to be on a daily basis. So to better understand how deep these roots go is going to better help you realize how long and how much of a process it's going to take to unprogram those roots or to reprocess them, so to speak. So once again, we have the artificial self that revolves around the ego concepts and the ego constructs. And then we have the true self which is at a state of silence and is at a state of pure being, which is just presence. You not trying to be a thing. You not trying to put on a show, not trying to put on an act, put on a personality. Just you being you emanating what it is that you are. That is the true self. And as I said, anyone has an ability to tap into this within themselves, even if you're not very, you know, advanced with your spiritual self-development, you have the ability to tap into it. You can just be you if you just shed your identity or if you just shed this need to portray yourself in the world around you or, you know, project this image. If you can just let go of that for a second and just actually and authentically be you, that is you tapping into your true self. Now, it's very rare that someone who is not spiritually self-developed is able to hold that energy, is able to just be their true self. Now, I say hold that energy, but that's actually contradictory in itself because when you are you, you're, there's no holding, there's no any, there's no extra force, there's no resistance, there's no, it's just you being you. Like right now, I'm just being me. I'm speaking the way that I speak, it's coming out authentically. I'm letting it flow. And that's it. There's no, I see myself as this image. I'm going to try to portray myself in this way to give you an illusion who is listening. It's just, I am being me. And I know that this energy that I naturally have causes a specific effect on those that are able to receive the energy. And that effect has everything to do with value real evolutionary value, source value, okay? So that's why I'm so able to be my true self in front of this camera. And I don't have to be concerned about, well, what if they think this? Or could I get more viewers if I talk like this? Or if I said these types of things, are they gonna like me more? Are they gonna you know, watch my, my content even more? I don't have to think any of these things. I just have to be in the present moment and know what I'm here doing which is spreading source value, source information. That's why we're all here truly to some degree, but it's all about finding your unique way of doing that. That's the purpose. But everyone's purpose generally revolves around some sort of spreading evolutionary source information. I, I know that for a fact. However you go about doing that, it doesn't have to be through words, it could be through music, it could be through art, there's many different ways to use that energy, okay? But once again, the reason why I'm at where I'm at and I'm able to be my true self is because I was so identified with the false version of me for so many years and I had created a relationship with that version of myself and I was extremely conscious of the part of my being that is not who I truly am. And I held on to that because of a deep fear that I had in my life, a deep fear which was truly connected to the unknown. I just didn't know what would happen to me or to my life if I let go of that identity, if I let go of that false version of me. I was afraid of what life would do with me. I was afraid of how the universe would you know, where would the universe put me? Would it put me in a place where I'm not gonna be successful? 
would have put me in a position where I'm not going to be happy. I was afraid. So I held on to that identity, but you know, as time went on, that identity was destroying me. It was too much energy to maintain, especially because I was hyper aware, I was hyper conscious. And I knew it wasn't me, so I couldn't maintain it. And I eventually had to sacrifice it, I had to let it go. And I had to realize nothing happens for no reason. The universe is going to put me where the universe puts me. Whether I like it or not, this is what has to happen. And I have to go with this flow. I have to go with this process. So ultimately, I opened myself up to the unknown. Didn't happen overnight, but I did. And I started the journey of actually pursuing the awareness of my true self. For the first time, I felt less tense. I felt less in control, but there was a sense of ease and a sense of peace that came from not having to be in control. And then there started to sprout a adventurous spirit within myself, an excitement towards the adventure of life itself, because now since I'm not controlling everything, and I'm not predicting outcomes, I'm relying on the universe to show me the next steps or the next stages of initiation I'm supposed to go down, and that's extremely adventurous in nature. So I developed this, this excitement for the adventure of life, and I'm no longer needing to be in control, and all I have to do is just be my authentic self. I have to, to my, best ability, just be me, which is hard. If, if you're not used to being your true self and you've spent many years portraying this fake image and identifying with it, it's hard to be yourself, your true self in the beginning. It's very hard. It took me practice and it took me time to be okay with being my true self. I literally had to learn how to re-communicate I had to learn how I speak and how my voice, you know, leaves my, my mouth and how my voice, you know, uses my voice box. Like I, I literally had to change, um, not even necessarily change, but I had to be aware of my true voice and my true dialogue, my, the true words that I, that I naturally say rather than trying to control these things all the time and trying to get, you know, certain results based on how I control these things. So this took practice and it was very uncomfortable. It felt very vulnerable. Like I felt like at any minute somebody could say, you're weak. You know, this is just how I felt. Now, in reality, I probably look like a normal person, right? I probably look like I was just having a conversation or trying to communicate something like a normal human being would. Um, but in my mind, it was like, my mind was on alert. It was like, you you look weak right now. If someone says something to you, are you going to be able to defend yourself? And that was the ego. That wasn't my true self telling me that. So it took time to be okay with being vulnerable and saying, you know what? If someone does say something to me that like triggers me right now, I don't even need to react. I just need to let it go. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Like it offends me. If it's true, then maybe I can work on something. Like if someone says something to me that offends me and it's true, then I'll just self-reflect and I'll use it to my advantage. I'll work on it. If it's not true, then I'll just let it go. It's that simple. So I eventually got my mind to understand these concepts. And the more I understood them, the more I was able to practice. And the more I practiced, the more I integrated and as I said, now I'm at a point where I am just always being my true self. To my best ability, I'm just always trying to be in that state where I know I'm coming from a, a place of this is who I am and this is how I feel in this present moment. Now, this is who I am changes all the time. It's never a solid identity, but Right now in this present moment, this is what I am. And this is how this, this part of me is going to express. And when that starts to shift, I go with it. I don't, 
I don't try to question that. I don't say, well, this is who I was last week, so I can't be this this week because that's contradictory. I go with these cycles. I go with these flows. And I understand that's the nature of cyclical growth and cyclical evolution. All right? And it feels extremely liberating to be in touch with your true self. And you start to realize a lot more value comes into your life when you do that. I mean, that's once again, the reason why we're all here is to be in touch with our true selves. Because when you're in touch with the true self, you are inherently living your purpose, whether you're aware of it or not. You are already inherently tapped into the program of your higher self, which is your purpose. Being the true self is almost like another word of direct channeling from your higher self. And you find that the universe literally benefits you for doing that because it's not easy and it takes real strength and real courage to be able to access that energy. And it's, as I said, it's a long process to getting there, a long process. This does not happen overnight. It takes years to do this. So when you do it though, as I said, there are benefits that come. There are many valuable things that come into your life and you start to literally love yourself more because you see how divine you are. Like I know the things that I'm saying right now, these things, like the words I'm saying are not planned. These are not scripted. Nothing is written down. Nothing is like, I'm going to say this and this is going to trigger this type of you know response and whoever's listening. This is just all coming from that state of the true self, coming from that state of true presence. And I know some of these things are highly impacting those of you that are receiving this information right now because it's coming from that state of presence. It's not pre-planned. It's not algorithmic. It's not artificial. This is raw, authentic understanding, raw, authentic, evolutionary value and information. And that gets received very well. It gets downloaded and it gets processed very easily. It's like giving someone already digested food when it comes through that raw channel. And that's what happens when you're in touch with your true self. You are that raw channel of energy, of value to the world around you. So you may say things that are coming from that place of the true self that are literally like on the dot of what that person needs to hear and the person's looking at you like, how did you even know that? I didn't even tell you about my life. I had told you nothing about what I'm going through and you just said something that spoke to me on the deepest level. How did you know that? This is what you can do. This is one of the powers of being in touch with your true self. And it's so important, mainly for you and your own spiritual evolution, but also for others around you and the planet and the, the universe as a whole, okay? So as I said, we're living in a society today, on a planet today, where there is a lot of artificial programming. So people are afraid to be their true selves. And I understand that. You know, I'm not looking at any of these people you know, with an eye of judgment and saying, you shouldn't be afraid. You know, you need to be more wise or you need to be stronger than that. I can understand that. You know, I can completely understand it. I mean, if we're constantly being indoctrinated and we're being programmed to not know ourselves, then it only makes sense that the majority of the people being operated on by these programs are not going to know their true self. But even if that's the case, that is not an excuse to not start that journey of self-awareness, especially if you already are self-aware and you're not actively trying to get to the deeper truth within yourself or the deeper mysteries of what it all means. If you stay conscious that you are not your true self and you're finding a happy space there because you feel like you have extra awareness from the people that don't know that 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 they they like from the people that don't even know they're not their true self you're not much farther than they are okay because you're not starting you're not initiating that journey of finding the true self that's where the real strength and that's where the real courage comes into play 
So until you start that journey, that's when you start really going through the process and really building that momentum and learning those lessons. But until then, you're just like everybody else, okay? Ignorance. Um, so, you know, as you're listening to this, just consider how important it is to put yourself out there without the need to project an image, without the need to get a specific response that you want from whoever it is that you're trying to influence. These are all ways of expression that pull you away from the true self. The true self doesn't give a fuck really how other people perceive you because it doesn't care. It's too powerful to care. It only spreads evolutionary information and evolutionary value because it knows that's how it increases its own power and it that's how it increases the power of those on the planet, other souls, which then, as I said, affects the planet and affects the universe as a whole, which once again, in return, increases your power. That's all the true self really cares about is power and spreading evolutionary value, okay? And the more you can wrap your mind around that, the more you can start being you without caring what everyone else is thinking of you unless you want them to control you and your life trajectory, which inherently will lead you in a direction that will not serve you and end up eventually self-destructing. If that's what you want, then that's the path you should take. But if that's not what you want, then definitely consider what it is that I'm talking about, okay? So with that being said, this is where I'm going to wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video, if you feel like you got value from it and it spoke to you at a deep level, come down here and hit that thumbs up button. That lets me know that you really gained a lot of value from this information. Also, go down and drop down in the comments and let me know in the comment section if this was an impactful video for you. Also, come down here and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I post content like this because clearly you don't wanna be missing out. Now also come down here and hit the subscribe button because by subscribing, you are further linking into the content. And when you further link into the content, you're getting more value from what it is that I'm teaching. There really is a psychic component that goes behind this, okay? You get more value because you're linked into the channel now. Now, if you don't want that, by all means, forget about it. Now, I wanna say this, you have my full permission to copy and paste this link to this video and send it out to anybody. Family, friends, social media platforms, you name it, you have my full permission. My intention is to spread this content like a wildfire. And that is exactly what has been taking place. So let's continue to do so, okay? Now, I'm going to take your awareness to literally the most important link within the entirety of the YouTube description itself. And this is the first link at the very top. You can't miss it. This is where you can join the Patreon. On the Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content. And none of this content is on my public YouTube channel. And that is for many intentional reasons. At this point, it's like a secondary YouTube channel, except everything on there is more advanced and more personal than what you're getting here, all right? As you move into tier number two and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities, okay? Then as you move into tier three, this is the most popular tier of the Patreon, and that alone speaks for itself. This is what's known as the Universe B Vampire Service. So what this is, is this is a service that I perform on the 29th of every single month that has one, and is designed to completely transform your energetic body to be more so Universe B dominant. Essentially what that means is more so negatively polarized, service to self oriented. What this does is this allows these individuals to exist within the darker energy areas and locations of the multiverse itself, 
without inherently getting harmed by them, but rather by developing knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and potential power from them instead. Now, it also gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and subconscious mind, which is feminine in nature. And it gives them a psychic capability to pull in energy from dark energy and chaos within the environment around them to transmute into their own power and evolutionary potential. Now, if this is something that intrigues you and you're drawn towards it, definitely consider that is tier number three of the Patreon, first link in the YouTube description. We'll leave that there. Now, as you move into the tier number four, this is the new top tier of the Patreon. This gives you access to everything from the previous tiers, except you get some bonus content as well. You get psychic predictions on a monthly basis. So I pull a personal tarot card and an oracle card from my personal made deck, which is designed to give you the initiatory energies that are coming into every new month based on your personal zodiac sign. So this also comes into play with the different astrological alignments and the natural cycles that we go through and how that will affect you every single month. So I pull these cards so that you can better navigate the energies of initiation for every single month. And all you have to do is be a top tier member to gain access to that. All right. So we'll leave that there. If this is something that you want to take advantage of, once again, all of this is within the Patreon first link at the very top. With that being said, I want to give a special shout out to everyone specifically who is a Patreon member for taking your knowledge, your practices, and your studies to that other side. Big shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as we move into the second link below, you can't miss it. This is where you can book a very unique tarot card reading from me. Now, this is a tarot card reading that I promise you have never received before. And the reason why is because I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person. So what that means is I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on that tree. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moment, and then what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree itself, okay? I've done well over a thousand readings. I've been doing this for well over a year. I do a reading every single day. If this is something you wanna take advantage of, definitely consider it. Second link below is how you can book. All right. Now within that same second link below, you have an option to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. So if you've been studying for my content, if you've been studying your own occult, you know, whatever, reading books, listening to other videos, who knows, and you have questions that you want to ask somebody like myself who probably has experienced what your questions may revolve around, then I would definitely consider that, okay? Now, also within that same second link, there are mentorship options. I have a six-week mentorship, and I have a three-month mentorship. This is amazing for individuals who are starting to get into initiation and are really wanting a guide throughout that process. That is really what I can offer myself as for those of you who are booking the mentorships, okay? So if that's something that intrigues you, definitely consider it. All these different services are in that same second link below. We'll leave it there. Now, as you move into the third link below, you cannot miss it. This is where you can join and become a YouTube member. As you become a YouTube member, you're getting access to many different types of benefits, but most importantly, you're getting access to what is called the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. So what this is, is this is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles and you can use them in a specific configuration, link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic effects to the target of your choice. This is literally the most simple form of utilizing psychic warfare through the internet platform, okay? There are well over 2,000 posts where individuals have already used this. There are people that are even using it right now in this moment. 
If this is something you wanna take advantage of for yourself, you can definitely do so. You click that third link below, then you join, become a YouTube member, and then you'll have access. So with that being said, this is where I'm going to bring it to its close. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you are extremely appreciated by myself, and I really do hope you have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.